Well, Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith back here with Meteorologist Matt Barentine. And Matt, we've got an eye now. We've got a system that's stronger than it was a couple of hours ago, and it's really close to the coast. Yeah, and it's historic is the way the uh, rainfall we were expecting, and it, it is right there with that. I mean, it's, it's pouring down a lot of rain. We're seeing rainfall totals now well over a foot already in our coastal areas, and we are nowhere near done with the system. Not at all. In fact, the heaviest rain may still be out over the Gulf and looking at the predictions here for Mobile County and Baldwin County, specifically Baldwin County, because it looks like the impacts could be magnified in Baldwin County. Talk about the surge uh, some Matt. you know, we're, we've got a range three to six feet. Who gets the three feet? Who gets the six feet? Who gets less than three feet? Yeah, well, it looks like it's going to be less than three feet for parts now, at least from this point on from a uh, Dolphin Island over on the west side here. So so once we go over to the east side, though, over towards Gulf Shores and Baldwin County, they're likely to see a higher storm, which they are seeing one right now, and it's at low tide. Tomorrow morning, we'll get that last bit of the surge in, and we'll see a pretty decent surge. There are localized impacts here. For example, with the north wind by La Battery, tides running two to three feet below normal. Mm -hmm. Weeks Bay showing tides running below normal. Some of that will change when the wind reverses course after the center crosses over, but the good news is we're ahead of the game over Mobile County. Different storms. We've had to update the surge predictions and the rainfall predictions two feet. Yeah, I mean, we got near Fort Walton right now. We already have areas for 15, 16 inches of rain. And we're still with we're in the middle of this or the beginning of it actually in areas with some of the rainfall. So there's going to be a lot more rain dump. 24 inches is just the top end of sort of the widespread. There's going to be some areas that might be even getting up to around 30 inches of rain. So like we said, a historic amount of rainfall that is going to cause serious flooding issues. All right, let's take a look at the inland spots. You're probably wondering about this as well. And the winds will be lighter once it finally makes it to the north because shear and the not be the surface not being over the water, we will see that as an improvement. Yeah, yeah. So it's looking inland, I mean, they're going to still see a lot of down trees up here. That's going to mean a lot of power outages, and that's going to be the big concern for inland areas and uh, inland counties. So that breaks it down county by county. Let's take a look at it full here as we see what's happening with Sally and the system. We are looking at it now as an 85 mile per hour Hurricane. It is a category one according to the very limited Saffir Simpson scale. Sally rated on a scale of one to five as a one. That's the lowest rating. Yet the impacts are likely going to be talked about for some time ahead. It has the rain of a five. It has the surge of a two plus, and I would say it has the wind of a, of a two plus because it's moving slow. So if you have a normal hurricane, it's moving at 10 or so miles an hour and it moves inland and you get two or three hours of some really bad weather and then it moves on. Well, this one is going to give us about 24 to 36 hours of some really bad weather. So that's why the impacts are going to be magnified. It's the slow forward speed, a very limited scale there when you take Take in impact the impacts of the system. The track has changed. This is the new forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. Came down at 10 o'clock, and we've seen a wobble to the northeast. Now, will it straighten up and go a little more north for a while and go back northeast? Time will tell. But you can see how uncertain the steering flow has been with Sally. Historically, we have had a wobble, but now it's currently not moving much at all. Two mile per hour forward speed. That means a system that's 20 miles out in 10 hours is still going to be out. It's just barely making it in. So we've got a long ways to go to bring this center ashore. It's going to be a long night tonight and it will be a long day tomorrow as we see the center and the line here shows that at 7 a.m. It should be just about to cross the coast. The center of the line is the Alabama Florida line, but I'd say a Baldwin County landfall or an Escambia County Florida landfall are most likely, but you know, you say, okay, well, if, it, if it's just hitting Baldwin County, no, it's not how it works. If it comes into Baldwin County, you're going to see intense surge and flooding in Escambia, Santa Rosa, and Okaloosa counties, and you're going to see a lot of wind and rain in Mobile County. So, yeah, where the center comes ashore has an impact, but a lot of counties, this is a very broad system, a lot of counties will be impacted. Speaking of that, got to talk about rain totals here, and we're in flash flood emergency type status as we're looking at rainfall rates one to two inches per hour and piling up on top of what's already been about a foot of rainfall today. We're getting really heavy rain. It's not going to stop.
top. It's going to keep going as we get into the night. We've got to watch this closely and we're going to be doing that for you right here on Fox 10 News. Plenty more weather updates to come. We're not going anywhere.